So we are going to start the uh, concept and reality book, uh, reading from that. Actually, we are taking certain part of it and then elaborating uh, by referring to various other suttas. Because what we are reading is somewhat uh, difficult in a way. And on the other hand, it is quite deep, extremely relevant to our Vipassana practice. So rather than trying to quickly jump to the other ones, other parts, uh, we hope to spend some time discussing several aspects available in the concept and reality book. And uh, so I think someone is ready with reading and probably someone you can uh, disc- uh, maybe read again about the part which is uh, talking about the Yavakalapi Sutta, that part, because last time, actually a couple of times, I have discussed certain areas available in the Yavakalapi Sutta. Today also, I hope to cover another aspect available there. Um, yeah, but I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let me share my screen. Yeah, so this is where we stopped the last time, Bhante, so shall I read from uh, Yeah, so that, from here that part, to... you better read that passage, yes. Yeah, okay, sure. <clears throat> um, it will be seen that each of the nine prepositions, uh, prepositions given above is qualified by five adjectives, manitam, injitam, panditam, papanchitam, and managatam. These latter may be examined in the light of what we have already stated regarding the question of aspects in Buddhist psychology. Manyata, man, to think, points to the thought activity or imagination which gives rise to those propositions. Injita, inj, to move, reminiscent of the term eja, which is the synonym for tanha probably refers to the emotional appeal of the propositions. Panditam, spanned, to throw. Panditam. 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 Yeah, no, the D has to be uh, pronounced as pandi. Actually, the, basically, that is the Pali pronunciation uh, in the, actually, uh, if if we find uh, a dot under D, then we have to uh, pronounce it as the, but if we simplify simple D without any underneath dot, then it, we have to pronounce it as the panditam. Panditam. Panditam, spanned, to throb, to palpitate, weaves them as characterized by the restless, restless mental activity. Managatam, ma, to measure, traces, traces their origin to the measuring and judging tendency inherent in conceptual activity, which is itself a constant process of value judgment. Papanchitam, punch, to spread out, to expand, may likewise imply the prolific tendency in the conceptualization, which gave rise to those propositions. The proposition, ask me, I am, is the foremost uh, Papanchita and the Madhupendika Sutta has already shown us why it is to be reckoned, uh, why it is to be reckoned a product of Prapancha. The other propositions portray perhaps more clearly the prolificity in the realm of ideation, the individuate, individuating, the generalizing, particularizing, and legitimizing tendencies which provide the scaffolding for theoretical superstructures. The particular context in which the Papanchita occurs in this sutta thus leads color, lends color to the assumption that Papancha signifies the inveterate tendency towards proliferation in the realm of ideation. Yeah, let me a little explain now. Actually, uh, I hope to share my screen also, uh, Saman. So I am going to share this. Yeah. Uh, so in general, uh, so this is what we are discussing uh, in the Yavakalapi Sutta. There are five uh, categories are mentioned or five prepositions are, five, five methods are mentioned, how uh, each 
kind of uh, proliferation or proliferative activity can begin or how thought formations can begin and those uh, possibilities first is mentioned as manyita second as injita third as uh, pandita next papanchita and last as the managata actually we are going through uh, all these one after the other because this is extremely important for us to understand so in a way a very deep philosophy here buddha is revealing to us a deep buddhist psychology that buddha is revealing us here and we already discussed how manyita that means conceiving going to happen and we already discussed again the injita going to happen the perturbation or agitation happening because of the craving how it can happen that also we already discussed and then pandita that also we discussed how a kind of a trembling situation happen as we are attached to something that uh, attached dependent source is going to be subjected to some sort of a change some sort of a impermanence then the people or we who are attached to that also going to be uh, sort of suffered or so basically basically now we have to discuss about the papanchita where the prapancha the prolific tendency in the mind manifolding tendency in the mind so we are capable of or we are doing sometimes unnecessary diversifying available in the mind so that is what we need to discuss today so how this uh, papanchita or pap- the the prolific tendency available in the mind ultimately going to sort of uh, suffering so immediately buddha in this uh, yavakalapi sutta he simply say asmiti bikkave papanchita meta ayang ahang asmiti papanchita meta so likewise buddha mention i am is a proliferation so you can see that that very uh, rooted or very fundamental thinking it is not that i am thinking very long and uh, discussing about the past events future events or present activities but the simple very simplistic thought formation i am also according to the buddha is a prapancha it's a kind of a proliferation and similarly uh, various other very rooted or extremely fundamental kind of thoughts are according to buddha is happening because of this prolific tendency and they they are also papancha our uh, proliferations and if you are thinking okay i'm going to be available tomorrow i'm going to do this tomorrow i am going to do that tomorrow so that all future related futuristic thoughts and where i is there a person an individual is there and with that when we are thinking like that so it is a proliferation it happens because of this prolific tendency available in the mind and similarly if i am talking about the past so oh, i did that i did so i talked to that i talked to him so likewise also i am coming out a person coming out and with respect to that person now i am talking about a certain activity so that also is a proliferation now you can see actually the thought processes are extremely causing for us to proliferate so that's why the whole theme of this book is that how we are minimizing this proliferation so it's a, it's taking us to very wide range and ultimately we could end up with overthinking conceptual proliferation and even maybe depression anxiety and all sorts of mental illnesses also so that is the kind of harm of this process now we already discussed how all this are happening with respect to the madupindika sutta that we already discussed so we recognize the first stage is very much uh, uh, common activity or a kind of a dependent process chakkunja paricha rupe cha upajji chakku vinyanam tinnan sangati passo passa pachya vedana so that part is very much common to everyone even to anarahant even to the buddha so this is this is a common process so when uh, the i and the form is come in line or eye of sight we can say uh, line of sight and then actually the 
chakku vinyana going to happen the knowing part happen eye consciousness going to happen but when this happens again and again we can't understand how chakku vinyana the eye con eye consciousness is entirely dependent on the eye and the form i and the in front of the sight so we forget about that but the knowing part is now becoming more and more available and we think i am here the object is there i am here she is there i am here my son is there so this is how we get the kind of the wrong kind of a perception and anyway this is happening again and again ultimately this tree comes together and we consider it as a contact the chakku sampassa as a result of that now the feelings are arising feelings are there and this is a kind of a causal reaction going to happen now after that actually we participate into the process now we want to look at how this vedana how this feeling has happened and there we start uh, recognizing it the sanjana yang vedeti tang sanjana so what we have felt now we want to sort of recognize so once we recognize we want to think about it yang sanjana ati tang vitakketi and once we start uh, sort of thinking about it we may we can think on many different ways as we just discuss so yang vitakketi tam papanche now we can this think from with respect to the past with respect to the future with respect to eyes with respect to ears with respect to nose tongue body mind so likewise we can magnify we can go into many directions so that starts that is the second part the third part of this proliferation is where we become a victim of this proliferation yam papanche ti tato nidanam purisam papanche sanya sanka samuda charanti so that is where we become a kind of a uh, how to say a victim a slave of to unto our own thinking now thinking is going on we can't stop him. we simply are driven by our thinking the proliferation so basically this is something uh, happening and we can remember that uh, this is something discouraged by the dhamma and many suttas are there uh, buddha and many other disciples basically asking us to minimize this proliferation say for example in bhagavad sutta given by venerable sariputta there he basically say so if you want to have a proper death assume now you are looking forward for a good death a fortunate death so he summarizes various causes for you to have a good death so among them the sixth cause that is the most important cause is na papanchara mohoti na papanchara to na na papanchara matam anyutto they are when the sariputta mention okay you should minimize avoid proliferation you should not have any kind of a tendency or indulgence into proliferation and you are not getting involved with proliferation if so you can have a a good kind of a death and on the other hand uh, there's a very beautiful verse actually available in that sutta in bhadaka sutta yo papancha manuyutto papancha birato magu ஒன்பதுபிரோனி so your mind has no any relaxation your mind has no any peace rather you are continuously in a kind of a turmoil burning state and you are going away from nibbana yoga kema anuttara so the complete liberation is far away from us far away from you so the opposite case also highlighted yoga papancha hitvan nippa pancha pade ratu so if you are able to abandon proliferation and instead you are now more delighted or more inclined towards nippa pancha keeping a mind free from prapancha keeping a mind which is fairly calm fairly relaxed fairly silent no inner chatter no proliferation then 
ஆராதை சோனிபானம் யோகா கேமா அனுப்பா தென் இட் இஸ் வெரி மச் லைக் யூ ஆர் வெல் பிரிப்பேர்ட் ஃபார் நிபான யுவர் மைண்ட் இஸ் கேபபிள் ஆஃப் அட் எனி நிபான யூ மே ஈவன் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சிங் இட் இன்ஸ்டட் ஆஃப் பேர்னிங் யூ மே ஃபீல் பீஸ் யூ மே ஃபீல் காம்னஸ் யூ மே ஃபீல் இன்னர் சைலன்ஸ் பிகாஸ் இன்னர் சட்டர் கம்ப்ளீட்லி கிவன் அப் அண்ட் மைண்ட் பேசிக்கலி இஸ் குவைட் சைலன்ட் but still you are vigilant it doesn't mean that you are sleeping it doesn't mean that you are in a kind of a trance rather mind is quite uh, vigilant but still quite silent as well and there are various other suttas uh, this is uh, explained how say for example in the anuruddha mahavitaka sutta we have in the anuruddha had several uh, very interesting uh, thoughts about how the buddha's teaching is uh, quite appropriate for certain kind of people he basically says so this buddha's teaching is very much is for the people who are who are interested of having few not the people who are who want to have many things apichassayan dhammo nayan dhammo mahichassa so there are people who are constantly asking for this asking for that even though they have many things never satisfied and they are houses are like say filled with so many so many things so basically their mentality is that uh, having more and more asking more and more never feeling satisfied but on the other hand the buddhist teaching is for the opposite who basically have a certain amount of contentment with having little things with having few things only the essential things are there not asking so many things rather they prefer to have only the essential things so that is their tendency maybe in the mind also they are basically not corrupted or basically not to overthinking rather the mind has certain amount of peace and a spacious mind so likewise here as the last point in this sutta also when well actually the buddha teaches venerable anurudh nippa panchara nama sayan dhammo nayan dhammo papanchara nama sa pamancharatino basically venerable anurudh was thinking about it thinking about these good causes but ultimately buddha come and inform this that this dhamma is for the person who basically inclined towards nippa pancha inclines towards non proliferation keeping the mind free from proliferation this is this dhamma is for such person actually then penbal under the couldn't think further and further because buddha buddha statement or buddha's the last eighth uh, course actually made him to stop thinking he want to maintain that non prolific st- state of the mind stop conceptual proliferation and keeping the mind fairly quiet at peace so that is how he attained the arahanthood so we can see this is a extremely important part in our vipassana practice so again and again our minds may tend to think too much may tend to proliferate may tend to overthink and we have to be careful about it and we should not encourage it we have to be vigilant with the mind is doing it if uh, mind starts it we better apply breaks we better stop it and try to minimize it try to stop it and ultimately try to enjoy the silence and on the other hand there are certain other areas that we can learn how the papancha starts so one thing is actually highlighted in the kalaha vivada sutta where buddha mention sanya nidana hi papancha sankha so various uh, signs various marks so once we give certain emphasis to them once we give certain importance to them so that that actually causes papancha that actually causes certain amount of thinking now say for example into your mind there may be a slight mental image could appear so once it appear if we are not mindful what can happen is that we may start thinking about it we may 
even attribute a person to that. We may personify that. And uh, now there are a lot of likes and dislikes in coming to the picture. And uh, now we start thinking, uh, ultimately we end up with overthinking. But how we started it is from a very little mental image. Maybe a little sound. So that little sound we can't simply ignore or we can't simply acknowledge and get aside. Let it go. Rather we start manipulating it. We start adding to that. We start constructing on top of that. So ultimately it it end up with overthinking. So so these are in a way certain good areas for us to think about because uh, as we are moving uh, deep down into our mind, so these are the tendencies available in our mind. So we may start using Kāna Pasana, Vidana Pasana, true, but as we are slowly, slowly understanding deep uh, habits rooted in our mind, so these are the tendencies that Buddha is teaching us, revealing us how our minds are tend to think too much, how our minds are tend to diversify things, magnify things, and live and thinking in many different directions. Sometimes those are not even appropriate, but still mind is tend to think. And certain other areas also we can re- recognize. So there's a very interesting sutta called Tuvataka Sutta in the Sutta Nipata. So we are one person is asking a question. Puchamitang Adi Chabandu Vivekang Santi Padancha Mahesi Katan Diswa Nibbati Bhikkhu Anupadiyano Lokasmin Kinchi. He directly asked the question from the Buddha. Now you are the person who are basically residing in Viveka. You are, your mind is entirely on the rest. You are completely free from Prapancha. You are completely free from proliferation. Santipada Ancha Mahesi. So you are the king of the Santipada, the Nibbana. The peaceful state of mind. And please tell me, Katan Diswa Nibbati Bhikkhu. After seeing what a monk going to attain Nibbana without uh, attaching to anything in the world, without clinging into anything in the world. Now, Buddha's answer is the one mostly important to us here. Moolam papanja sankhaya manta asmiti sabbang uparundi yakati tanha ajjatta tasma vinaya sada sato sikhi. Now, this actually the importance of Suttanipata verses is that the whole practice is extremely concise even into a single verse. So, this verse is something like that. Where Buddha mentioned Papancha Sankhaya Mula. Now, all these prolific tendencies, all these conceptual proliferations have their root. So, what is the root? So, that is the Asmiti. So, I am is the root. Asmimana is the root. So, we have this wrong idea or the ignorance that we perceive I am here. So, you always have that kind of a notion, wrong notion. I am here. So as a result of that, I am here and you are there. So we good we do immediate kind of a measurement. So I am here, you are there, I am good, you are bad. Or I am bad, you are good. I am tall, you are short. So likewise we continuously do this kind of a measurement. So that's, that is how I ultimately get into the mana, the conceit. So that that the very very source is where we recognize or identify ourselves as an individual, as I am. So here Buddha summarizes that I am, so that tendency, that asmimana, is the root cause of papancha. This is how the papancha actually builds up, originates. Now the advice is, now you got to sabbang uparunde, now you need to stop it. How are you going to stop it? You are going to check it using your wisdom, manta. Manta sabbang uparunde. Using your wisdom, now you need to cut it off, check it out. This asmi mana. And if you are able to do that further, you 
Kyakati Tanha Ajatang Tasma Vinaya Sada Sato Sikhe. And if there is further craving available in the mind, still even though the mind is not uh, proliferate, get into certain amount of proliferation, suppose that you are able to stop thinking. As we are continuing your practice, maybe there may be times that uh, your mind has stopped thinking. Doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you are dying. Rather, you are, your mind is silent now. You are experiencing that inner silence. But unfortunately, it doesn't mean craving is completely uprooted. Still craving is available in the mind. But the sankharas are to some extent subsided. So mind does not talk. Inner chatter is not available. Rumination is not available. Proliferation is not available. To some extent, you are experiencing calmness, peacefulness in the mind. But still, craving is available in the mind. Now you need to further mindfully restrain yourself so that this uh, craving has to be abandoned. So that the craving will be faded away. Yakachi tanha jatang te sang vinaya, ta sang vinaya, sada sato sikhe. Every time you need to be mindful and you are training yourself, you are restraining yourself, taming yourself, so that this internal craving ultimately slowly, slowly faded away. Now you can see the, in a way, the path explained here is extremely important. So in one size, in one side, Buddha mentioned, okay, you got to stop proliferation. You need to minimize conceptual proliferation. You need to stop overthinking. If it is necessary to think, okay, you can think, but stop overthinking. Stop conceptual proliferation. So that itself is tremendously capable of cutting off defilement, so fading away of defilements. And on the other hand, with the further emphasize, now you may be able to stop thinking, but still don't think that you are an arahant now. Rather, craving is still still available. Now you not need to do, be mindful every time as much as possible and recognize how craving is happening. What are the desires arising? What are the inner requests coming from? So what are the requests? What is the thirst available within the mind? So how again thirst is coming? How again craving is coming out? How What are the demands coming out? Popping up from the mind. So those are the desires. Those are the demands. Those are the cravings. The results of the craving. Now you need to be mindful and recognize them. Tesang vinaya sada sato sikhe. So rather than trying to satisfy those desires, now you need to slowly let it go. Slowly abandon. So this is a very interesting uh, part available in this uh, Tuataka Sutta. And uh, there are uh, Buddha highlights that uh, you need to stop proliferation. And other than that, you need to stop or rather recognize craving and slowly abandon that. And let me conclude uh, by giving another little sutta, uh, like the Bahya Sutta. Ditte ditta matam bhavisati, sutte sutta matam bhavisati, mute muta matam bhavisati, vinyate vinyata matam bhavisati. Evang hi te bahya sikkitabha. So this is a kind of a training that uh, teaches by the Buddha to bahya. So the Vendol Bahia is a person who already has thorough understanding and he's the extremely capable person, a gifted person, and he's the person who in this whole Buddha Sasana who was able to attain Arahamship very quickly. And the, the training that Buddha immediately give, given to him is a very special kind of training. So for us to come to this level, actually, it may take years. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that we can never reach, but still people are reaching this state. So if you recognize, say, certain Dhamma discussions, people are talking. Okay, even though I can see things, but mind is not interested of talking about it. Mind is not interested of thinking about them. Rather, mind prefers to stay alone without getting mixed up with things. 
similarly even though i can hear sounds while i am walking people are say yogis are telling okay i don't need to think about them so sounds are merely sounds now they are not disturbing me mind remains calm the peacefulness of the mind is retained even though sounds are there mind does not talk no overthinking no inner chatter no hate even though sounds are coming and going similarly there may be smells there may be tastes there may be tangibles one may be able to recognize them but still mind remains calm the stability of the mind the clarity of the mind the peacefulness of the mind is intact so one is able to maintain that clarity that peacefulness even though the sense impingements ma impingements are happening and the last statement is also very important vinyate vinyata mattam bhavishyati we are maybe certain thoughts time to time pop up in the mind you can even recognize them but you are not getting to thinking about them you are not giving much importance to them because you know they simply have a reason so they simply will pass away i don't need to worry about it i don't need to push them away because they have the property to pass away it is not that i am trying to sort of uh, cut them off rather so they inherently have the quality to pass away so it's a matter of being vigilant without getting involved without giving much importance rather recognizing thought as a mere thought so then mind remains calm mind was able to maintain its clarity the peacefulness that's it you are not making any person out of this experience so if now buddha mention if you are able to maintain this kind of a restraint then you are not making a person over there that means at the sight at the sound at the smell at the taste at the tangible or at the thought you are not making a person and you are not telling it belongs to me and again you are not making a person over here i am the one seeing i am the one hearing i am the one tasting smelling touching i am the one thinking there is no such thing either you are not making a person even here in between also you are not making any personal preferences so this is the end of suffering so these are very very interesting suttas where buddha is teaching us how we need to continue our practice how one may reach these kind of very interesting uh, skills and ultimately as to venerable bahia buddha mentioned so we need to understand their importance and to maintain that as a restrainment and if you are able to continue that then slowly slowly our defilements may start fading away mind may start enjoying in a silence without conceptual proliferation you might experience very calmness peacefulness in the mind lightness in the mind clarity of the mind and there is no stress there is no burden so this is how that one can recognize that you are leading towards nibbana the fading away of lust is happening now fading away of hate is happening now fading away of delusion is happening now to that extent you are experiencing the calmness of the mind clarity of the mind peacefulness of the mind so i think uh, that is enough for today as the dhamma sermon now i like to open the session for questions ജനുവരിസ്റ്റ് Uh, as we have done previously we will post these sessions until mid january as most of us will be attending one or more of these residential retreats as well and i believe one day we will be getting quite busy in sri lanka at the monastery handling uh, the retreats as well 
Uh, so we will share with you the schedule for Lord Swami Nath's retreats. If anyone is interested in participating in a mindful retreat where you can get to uh, where you get to practice continuously for five to six days with Dhamma sermons and Q&A. It's a great opportunity for anyone and we would highly recommend doing that if it's possible at all. Uh, if you would like to join the Dhamma sermons and Q&A online, you can do so as well. We will be sending uh, some uh, the information regarding that via email. So if you don't uh, actually currently get the weekly reminder email about the uh, about this program. So just drop me a note with your email into the chat and I will add you to the email list. We will be sharing the January, uh, when we will uh, start the January sessions next uh, after checking with monthly schedule. And uh, so it's most probably going to be mid-January. Is there anything Bhante would like to add? Uh, not really. Maybe we will be able to start mid-January. That would be fine. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, move on to the questions now. Um, so, we have six questions today. Yes. Question number one of six. Uh, this is a dumb sermon question. Dear Bhante, thank you and much merits for the detailed explanation of various mental states and processes associated with the mind during the last few Dhamma sermons. Example, explanations of Ingita, Managata, Prapanja, etc. Can we use these understandings at some point to analyze the mind bhante? Hope bhante can explain how we can do this practically. With metta. Let's see another question. Yeah, definitely. So that is why we are discussing this, not just a kind of a mere theoretical uh, treatise that we are doing this. So basically these uh, teachings are utterly helpful for us to understand the operation of our mind. Right. Okay. How whenever a small thing happens, how we are tend to think too much. So for example, today we discuss about the uh, proliferation, the tendency available in our mind to proliferate. So we need to understand, is my mind also doing that? So I have understood that it is available in me, probably. <laughs> so when a small thing happens, so I also start exaggerating it, maybe multiplying it, magnifying it and start taking it too high and thinking too much about it. I have, I have suffered that a lot using that, that proliferation. But thanks to the Dhamma, the practice, to some extent now it is reduced. So similarly, we all actually have to understand the value of these teachings and those teachings will be the guidelines for further Vipassana. So as we discussed today, the minds may have this tendency, so we need to notice that tendency. So whenever it is uh, slowly picking up, slowly start uh, catching the momentum, so we need to stop that. And that is a harmful activity if we are continuing it. So we already discussed the harm or the disadvantages of this uh, proliferation. So similarly, we understood about the manjita, the conceiving part. So always eye-centered thinking. So how the conceiving can happen or the imaginations can happen. So th things things are not really happen, but we can imagine things. So that is also unnecessary burden to the mind. So that also we can stop, at least minimize. And again, the pandita, there's a kind of a restlessness in the mind. Maybe certain amount of uh, trembling in the mind. Because our minds are attached to something. Our minds are holding something. But what we are attached to, what we are holding is not the permanent thing. They are subjected to various kinds of ups and downs, impermanent behavior. So since we attach to that, ultimately we are the ones going to suffer. So likewise, so more we understand this deep Dhamma as a result of Buddha's guidance. So we need to understand this nature available in our own mind and slowly try to uh, take care of that. So that is the advice to the advice to the monks, actually uh, to each and every part of this uh, Yavakalapi Sutta. Now Buddha mentioned for today's uh, this thing. Let me again share the screen so that uh, you can easily see that. So in Yavakalapi Sutta, here Buddha mentioned 
papanchitam bikave rogo, papanchitam gando, papanchitam sala. Monks, this conceptual proliferation is a roga, it's a disease, it's a gando, it's a boil, and it's a salam, and it is a it's a dart. Tasmati ha bikave, nipapanchena chetana vihari samati, evang hivo bikave sikitabha. Therefore, monks, you should restrain yourself that I am going to live free from papancha. So this is the statement. This is the advice by the Buddha. So this is the main thing actually, the essence of this sutta. So each and every section highlight a certain kind of this essence. The advice to the monks, advice to the practitioners. So Buddha is telling this, papancha is a disease, papancha is a dart, papancha is a cancer. So please, you should restrain yourself Advise yourself, have a kind of a motto, I am going to live a mind free from papancha. So this is a statement. Yeah. You are muted, Chamila. Right. Uh, question number two of six. That's a general question. Dear Bhante, when we read some sutras like Upakesa Upakesa we find that up unto the up, that up to the final outcome of Arahant state, the Blessed One explains the path through attaining jhana in succession during the light and form, using the light and form. There is no special vipassana practice or technique highlighted in these suttas. Does that mean vipassana is embedded in the samadhi-based path as well? Appreciate Bhante's explanation. Yeah, we can say there's a kind of an embedding available. So, say for example, in certain suttas with the highlights, so you may attain jhana, but if you want to sort of uh, start vipassana, you need to emerge from that. Now you need to understand the disadvantages of the jhana. You need to understand the impermanence of that jhanic experience. You may be, you may have experienced certain amount of pleasant abiding, uh, kind of pleasure while being in the jhana. Now it has gone. Now it has disappeared. How impermanent it is. You may have experienced certain amount of rapture while being in the jhana, but now it has disappeared. It has faded away. How impermanent it is. So likewise, all that jhanic experience has to come under the vipassana eye. So that is how basically uh, would the advice if you are going to the first first samatha and then vipassana approach so the jhanic experience itself has to come through or go through under kind of a scrutiny of the vipassana eye certain suttas are there basically highlighting that so without further indulging in that instead you step back emerge from it and recognize how the impermanent characteristics of those different experiences, maybe feelings, maybe perceptions, what you had during the jhanic experience. So all that has to come under the purview of the impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and the non-self. Question number three of six. Uh, Bhante, you can hear me clearly? Yes, yes, can. Um, This is on mindful walking. Uh, dear Venerable Bhante, how do you combine Chitta Anupasana with walking mindfulness practice? Walking mindfulness seems working very well for me and I practice at least one hour regularly. I just want to know how this practice will grow to cover the four Satipatthana practices. Metta, that's the end of the question. Yeah. So, by the way, I mean, start with the Kayanupasana. So, slowly, slowly bringing your attention to the body and establishing mindfulness maybe on the touching sensations and how certain, uh, say, hardness, softness, these are happening and how they are may quickly appear and then disappear. So we are getting so much from this Kayanupasana. Probably later, your mind may suggest you to, okay, why don't you look at your mind while walking? So what are the thoughts available while walking? And slowly, probably you may see certain thoughts related to the past, certain thoughts related to various future plans, or maybe what you have seen while you are walking, maybe 
maybe you have heard about a song with respect to that song there may be thoughts available in the mind so now you are slowly exploring the mind even though the body is walking so you can simply allow the body to walk as usual but while body is walking you are actually more careful or more more uh, observing about the mind now you are practicing chitta anupasana while walking actually for you to practice chitta anupasana you doesn't need any kind of a posture you can practice any kind of a special posture you can practice chitta anupasana at any posture and once you get into chitta anupasana you should try your best to look at the mind as much as possible say from the morning that you have wake up and the, till the moment that you are going to bed you better watch the mind because mind is always maybe jumping from one to the other maybe start thinking overthinking and all that proliferation and all many things are there so it's a matter of more and more taking care of the mind looking at the mind understanding deep tendencies available in the mind so slowly slowly you are getting to these areas question number question number 4 of 6 uh, this is dhamma sama question dear bante regarding the explanation today on madupin madupindika sutta and the feeling which generate perception are these primordial feelings of like dislike and neutral or are these fully fledged common feelings that we know i am confused with the word feeling at this stage of the process much merits for your service as we have another question so as as far as i can understand your question so you are asking whether they are very gross kind of feelings or very subtle feelings so i think so here this process may continue so for our understanding basically uh, the very intrinsic very fundamental reaction is explained here the formula like thing is explained here but this formula is catching the momentum then the feeling is growing say for example chakkuncha padicha rupe choppadi chakku vinyanam thinna sangati passo passa pachya vedana so that is happening again and again so when it happens again and again the feeling starts slowly slowly growing <clears throat> and uh, so that is how ultimately we start sensing it maybe the very early stage of the feeling we can't even feel but as it is growing to some extent once it reaches certain threshold then only we start feeling about it then only we start to know that uh, there is something i want to recognize what it is now the sanjana arti the happens the recognition going to happen for the thinking going to happen it has to reach certain threshold point because our our senses are not so uh, sensitive to the very minor or very soft kind of a stimulation so it has to reach some extent for us to get the proper knowledge or proper stimulation then only we start reacting so so what is available mentioned here in that sense is a quite a uh, formula kind of thing explaining us how things are developing but when it happens many times thousand times and then we can say it is catching the momentum and ultimately we feel a gross feeling question number 5 of 6 this again uh, the dhamma saman question bante there seems to be a process of six consciousness first arising from the six senses there also seem to be a knower or observer who process all the six consciousness arising from the external and internal world past present and future who exactly is the knower or observer cognizing the information with wisdom is there a two step process of consciousness and the knower thank you man let's take another question yeah this is yeah this is a very very interesting question actually uh, we'll cover this maybe at a future time uh, using the uh, sutta called kalakarama sutta and that is the theme or the base for katakurunde theros uh, another book magic of the mind where kalakarama sutta is the one uh, he is explaining from many different angles so there are the buddha's uh, important message to us is that there is no no word <laughs> so seeing is there 
apart from seeing there is no seer there is no observer and uh, say hearing is there there is no any listener and maybe the the smell smelling is going on but there is no a person who is uh, knowing that smell on the other hand there may be a taste available tasting is there but there is no a person who is tasting something similarly uh, there may be a tangible experience kind of a contact is there but apart from that experience there is no any person who is experiencing that and on the other hand there are our thoughts but that doesn't mean you or person is there to think so this is a very very difficult area to understand even and uh, actually uh, let me if, if i if you are fortunate let me find out uh, uh, kalakarama sutta so that i will give certain uh, indications to you kal uh, and uh, kalakar so there uh, i am going to show you uh, something this is a pali by the way uh this is from kalakarama sutta available in the anguttara nikaya chatukka nipata kalakarama sutta so there buddha mention iti itiko bikkave tathagato datta dattabbang dittang na manyati adittang na manyati dattabbang na manyati dattaran na manyati so this is the most important part for us to uh, clarify now what buddha mentioned here datta dattabang dittang na manyati now he the tathagata the arahan so he basically uh, see things but based on what he see he does not do any kind of conceiving na manyati he does not do any kind of conceiving based upon what he has seen on the other hand uh, adittang na manyati he doesn't proliferate conceive based upon what he has not seen adittang na manyati based on what he has not seen he is not uh, proliferating or conceiving and then dattabban na manyati so that means i should see this i should see that so that is no that kind of proliferation either on the other hand the last important very very important part is that dattarang na manyati i am the one who has seen it i am the one who has a best observing capacity there is no such kind of observation either he does not prepare a person he does not prepare a self an individual based upon seeing there is no seer is double e r there is no seer so similarly he mentioned uh so tarang na manyat you are not considering a listener and based upon that you are not going to conceive so tarang na manyat similarly uh mo tarang na manyat using the using the tongue then the body and the uh nose you may be experiencing various things maybe odor taste tangibles but even that you are not considering that i am i am experiencing that that is a person experience in that you are not conceiving like that either on the other hand the last one is we are vinyataran manyati that even though thoughts may come and go you are not considering that you as an individual as a person as a soul as a self is there to think but the thinking as a process is happening So this is very interesting area for you to maybe to think <laughs> okay so now we take the last space is the last question and it's a for our time it's a question with the other question dear bank yeah. can you give us some guidance and tips to get ready for the upcoming retreat of most venerable damajaya mahadev what are the immediate prerequisites of a residential retreat Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can stop thinking. Proliferation. 
<laughs> now, now before the retreat you guys are planning too much so how am i going to do it how am i going to do this ultimately what we expect from the retreat is to minimize proliferation so to keep the mind very quiet calm relax so that's the last result as we discussed even today so don't think too much about the retreat just go and participate enjoy it have a very nice time be with yourself and just enjoy it don't proliferate <laughs> thank you for that for that advice uh, so we don't have any more uh, questions and i think we just about uh, come to the time i mean come to 9 o'clock here yeah, so i think we can end the program today um, right today to end the program i would first like to pass our merits and thank vante for his valuable time even in the busy schedule at the monastery to all the supporters of this program both seen and unseen and to the participants for joining today to practice and share their questions sadhu 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 peron sanai yeah peron sanai yeah,